In this election year, inflation, foreign policy, and reproductive rights have dominated the national conversation, while climate change policy has really failed to emerge as a major ballot issue. But in the battleground state of Pennsylvania, environmental groups have been reaching out to voters, with those volunteering on the ground saying they believe climate-minded voters could make a big difference. There's a lot of what the political scientists call low propensity climate voters. They care deeply about the climate, but maybe they're just decided there's nothing that can be done or whatever it is. So we've got to reach them and just say, this isn't everything, but you know what? You've got to vote. You might as well use it. Let's bring in CBS News senior coordinating producer of climate, Tracy Wolf. Tracy, great to see you. I know that you have some data on voters who rank climate as their top issue and didn't vote in 2020. What can you tell us about them? Sure, Ouija. So I've been speaking to a group called the Environmental Voter Project. They're a nonpartisan nonprofit that's been doing extensive data polling analysis on this group that they call non, non-voting climate voters. Essentially, like you said, these are people that did not vote in 2020, have not voted in an election since, but they consider climate their number one electoral issue. Most of these voters do tend to be under the age of 35. They are disproportionately people of color. But according to the Environmental Voter Project, there's nearly 5 million of these voters in the 19 states where uh, the Environmental Voter Project is active. And they do believe that they can be very consequential to this year's election, especially in some key battleground states. Is there anything you can tell us about those voters in the battleground states? How many there are, how they might tend to vote, and if they will this time around? Absolutely. So the Environmental Voter Project has already identified nearly 250,000 of these voters in the key battleground state of Pennsylvania, for example. Almost half a million of these voters in Georgia So when you think about an election that is decided on the margins with the narrowest of victories, these voters could be quite consequential. And in fact, we heard from their executive director earlier this week, and here's what he had to say. I mean, just as an example, Arizona was decided by fewer than 11,000 votes in 2020. Yet the Environmental Voter Project has identified 230,000 potential first-time climate voters in the state. And we have been already talking about the early voting period. I wonder how this group has been performing so far, if at all. Sure. So according to the Environmental Voter Project, these kind of first-time climate voters, 86,000 of them have already come out and voted in early voting in the 19 states where the group is active. Now, when you look at some of these key battleground states, you're seeing that all climate voters, which include people that do care about the environment, that have voted before, as well as these targeted voters, they're already coming out and voting in larger numbers than the general electorate. In fact, in the key swing state of Pennsylvania, they're outvoting that electorate almost two to one right now. So it really could prove to be quite decisive, but it's worth stating that we don't know exactly how these voters have voted. Obviously, early voting does tend to trend Democratic. Environmental voters often tend to blue tend to vote along the blue ticket. So it still remains to be seen, but this is a group worth watching. For sure, and an issue worth expanding on. Thank you so much, Tracy Wolf. Thank you.